Several weeks ago, I received the newly released Unify Switch USW Enterprise XG24. This is the box. As you can see, it's not super deep, just a normal packaging from Ubiquiti. These are all inside the box, the normal accessories from Ubiquiti, nothing special. Ubiquiti had released this switch for several weeks, but I didn't order it right after it was released because I already have a Aggregation Pro. It has enough 10 gigabits port for me, but I have to use the RG45 modules in order to connect to Ethernet cable. I am planning to upgrade my PFSS to a custom built rack mount server, so I will have 10 gigabits RJ45 input for my router. So yes, theoretically, we, I can use the Aggregation Pro and with a RJ45 module for that, but I still prefer a direct RJ45 port. So that's why I started considering this one. And then finally, I placed my order. If you check another video in my channel, I already reviewed the little brother for this switch, which is USW Flex is not a rack mount one and it has only four 10 gigabits RG45 ports. So this one is rack mount one, that's what we need. Even though what I really need is just this 24 10 gigabits RG45 ports, this one also comes with two 25 gigabits ports. According to the user's menu, they are intended to be used as uplink, but in my case, the upper link will be a 10 gigabits RG45 to my PFSense. So I won't use these two 25 gigabits ports for uplink. I'm going to use them for downlink to connect to other switch. So let's see whether it works. This is how it looks like after I mount this USW Enterprise XG on the rack. On the screen, you can see three different devices. This one is Enterprise PoE. This one is Aggregation Pro, and this one is Enterprise XG. These two, the first one and the third one, they are both called something Enterprise. So interestingly, they look almost the same, and all the 24 parts are in one row instead of two rows. It will make your cable management very convenient. It also looks good. One thing I don't like about this Enterprise XG, it's the same as the Enterprise PoE. The LED light only has one color. It's white. It just indicates whether it's on or off. It doesn't tell you what's the speed, whether it's one gigabit or 10 gigabit or even 100 megabit. Sometimes it's not very convenient. I don't know what's the design thinking behind the devices. Maybe because they are intended for so-called enterprise usage, people don't care about the LED color. But for me, I have to go to the Unified Controller to see whether a connection is really 10 gigabit or not. So so far, that's my only complaint. You can see this Enterprise X3, it has 24 10 gig RJ45 parts. In the right, you have two SFP28 parts. This Aggregation Pro has four SFP28 parts. So I connect one of them to this Enterprise XG so that these two are communicating using 25 gigabits. And then I connect remaining 25 gigabit part with my EXXI server so that my virtual machines can have the 25 gigabit as well. Similarly for the Aggregation Pro, for the remaining three, I also connect them to the different rack mount ESXi servers. So in this video later, I'm going to test the performance. Just use three virtual machines connecting to this device with three the other virtual machines connecting to this Enterprise XG device. Let's see whether it can use up the 25 gigabit connection between them. In this video, I'm going to also test the so-called layer 3 switching feature. Let's see whether it works. Now let's go to the back of the rack. Let's see whether the fans or the noise levels really bother me or not.
This is the back of the rack. This is today's focus, the Enterprise XG device. And this one is the Aggregation Pro. As you can see, they are both one U unit. And the Aggregation Pro has four fans. And the Enterprise XG has only three. But because of the nature, the one U unit is very short. So the fan, fan noise is normally higher than bigger units. So I'm not sure whether you can hear. Let me be very close to the two units. This is the Aggregation Pro. This is the Enterprise XG. So to me, this sounds almost the same. Uh, the noise level is okay and it doesn't bother me at all because I put them in the server room. I have much louder uh, rack mount servers, so I don't really care. But if you do care about the fans, that's something you may want to consider because anyway, this Enterprise X3 does come with three fans. And not like this one, for example, this is the 2U UNVR Pro. It's much bigger, much higher, so the fan noise is much lower. Okay, and by the way, as you can see, this Enterprise X3 also comes with this uh, redundant power supply part. So I already connected to this uh, redundant power system. Let's briefly look into the Unify controller for this Enterprise XG switch. There's nothing special in controller. The settings are almost the same as any other Unify switch. But I just want to show you the colorful parts here. As you can see, we already have four different parts. So the light blue is the 2.5 gigabits, which I connect using a adapter to my laptop. Slightly darker blue are for the 10 gigabits connections. That's the mainstream connection speed for this switch. And the green one is the 1 gigabits one. Now it's connected to my PFSense. As you can see here, it's showing the uplink sign. Later, I'm going to upgrade my PFSense. So I will remove the 1 gigabit connection. That's a waste for this switch. The right side, the two purplish pinkish color are for the 25 gigabits. I connect them to another Unify switch, which is Aggregation Pro. I use them to serve two of my rack mount servers with dozens of virtual machines. My first testing will be the SFP28 part. In this demo diagram, you can see I use two different switches in this testing. I connect the Enterprise XG24 with the Aggregation Pro using this FFP28 part. So I guarantee this link is 25 gigabits. For the Aggregation Pro, I connected with a Dell rack mount server. I run EXXI on it. I have three Linux virtual machines running on it. For this Enterprise XG, I connect SFP28 part using the DAC cable to another rack mount server. And on this server, I also run EXXI, connect uh, the three separate Linux servers as well. All the six Linux virtual machines, they, for this three, they share this physical part. For this three, they share this one. All the three blue links, they are 25 gigabits. From this three Linux client, I will run iperf3 let's see what's the total network speed the reason i use so many linux uh, virtual machines for this testing is i tried only two linux virtual machines but no matter how i change the tcp ip settings i still can only achieve about 15 gigabit network speed so this time let me try six virtual machines let's see what's the network speed now you can see I have six 
terminal windows open. In the right side, I'm going to connect to the three servers which I plan to run iperf3 server. And in the left side, I want to connect to another three Linux boxes to run the iperf clients. So I already type in the IP address and the SSH command and let me log on to them. And now let me run the iperf3 server on the right side, three different virtual machines. From the left side, let me connect to the server respectively. First one, connect to the right side. Now, as you can see in the left side, I already input the three different commands. So I want the session to run 999 seconds continuously. And let me trigger them one by one. Okay, so now to get the total network speed, we can sum the three up. So basically what we are talking about is, let me see, oh, it's about 22, 23 gigabits. So it's very close to the 25 gigabits upper limit. So that means, yes, the two switches, the SFP8, SFP28 ports, if you connect them correctly, they can support this type of uh, throughput. And now, as you can see now, it's pretty heavy traffic. I have six Linux uh, virtual machines. They are commu communicating with each other. So each one runs perfectly fine. Now let's talk about the layer three switching feature. In my channel, you can find a dedicated video introducing how to make the Unify Switch Layer 3 routing work with PFSense. In this video, I won't waste your time uh, telling you how to make the PFSense and Unify controller settings. Uh, I will simply show you the different results if you do or do not have Layer 3 enabled. So in the left side, you can see the simplified network diagram. I have PFSense as my router. It's connected using a one gigabit ethernet cable to this enterprise XG switch. And the same switch is connected to two of my testing devices, both with 10 gigabits ethernet cables. One device is the Synology NAS, and the other one is a client, it's a Mac laptop. The special thing is I configure the two devices under two different VLANs. Even though here you see they are both connected using a 10 gigabit connection, let's see if iperf 3 can achieve the 10 gigabit network speed. From the VLAN 99, I'm going to run the iperf client from terminal, connect to VLAN 98. As you can see, the speed is miserable. It's only 800 megabits, much less than the 10 gigabits upper limit of the link. Let's see what happened. Because the switch is still working in layer 2 mode, it doesn't do the routing. These two machines belong to two different VLANs, so all the traffic has to go through the PFSense. And keep in mind, this red link is the bottleneck. It has only one gigabit. Even though these two blue ones, they are very fast, it's limited by this. Let's see how the layer 3 switching can resolve the problem. We enable the layer 3 switching here, and I switch the two machines to two different VLANs. This switch will support the so-called layer 3 switching. The network traffic won't go through the PFSS because the Unify Enterprise XG switch now behaves like a router. Doesn't need PFSense. PFSense even doesn't know the existence of these two VLANs. They are both handled by this Unify switch. Let's see what's the network speed. From VLAN 200, let me try to connect to VLAN 100. Okay, now you can see it's the expected good network speed is close to 10 gigabits. 
In the end, let me summarize my thoughts on this USW Enterprise XG24 port switch. The total price is almost $1,300. It's about $50 per part. So some people may think it's expensive. I expressed my opinion in my another video for Flex XG switch. I said in that video that considering a RJ45 module for SFP Plus part, it's almost $40 to $70. So $50 per RJ45 10 gigabits part is not really that expensive and it also give you 225 gigabits sfp28 ports and it also support layer 3 switching so it will be a very valuable part in my home networking thanks for watching